Good afternoon and welcome to Discovering the Tools to Drive Your Business, or otherwise known as the five key things in Facebook for business that you can't afford to ignore. My name is Dante St. James. We'll be taking you through this. I'm a Facebook community trainer with Facebook Australia New Zealand um, as one of my contracts. I'm um, being very proud to be um, sort of representing them around Australia over this last two years and considering um, that uh, 2021 is going to be much the same, there's going to be a lot more of it to come. We're going to be looking at a whole bunch of stuff today. We're going to cover getting your online presence ready for customers to be able to encounter you on Facebook, creating some great interactive content. We're going to look at how you increase your sales using these particular tools and managing your online presence as well as the future of getting that point where you can expand your team as well. So let's get underway. There's a lot to cover this afternoon. So first with getting your online presence ready, we're looking at setting up your Facebook page and Instagram business account if you haven't done that already. Using your profile, your sorry, your page to provide some level of customer support as well as increasing sales. So first of all, here's an example called Lucky Shrub. It's um, a pretend uh, business that's all about getting their particular page on Facebook and their Instagram profile together and looking just complete enough to be able to go out there and sell successfully. By giving themselves on the left, you'll see that the home and garden store has been the, the category they've chosen. Getting your category there is really important for helping you to be found in Facebook's search engine. Now, it's not always been the best search engine, but one thing it does do is allow you to appear in local oriented Excuse me, sorry, I've got a really groggy throat this afternoon for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> we'll look at the category here, which is your way of being found on the Facebook family of apps, whether it's through Instagram or whether it's through the Facebook Blue app itself as well. Now, Lucky Shrub has been very good in making sure they uploaded a really evocative image in their cover photo, as well as having a logo in place in the circle part rather than just loading up a photo into their profile picture. The profile picture with a logo helps customers to be able to much more easily identify you when you're coming up in the feed so they can see that you are that person they think they are. Now, a call to action button like call now is really important on there because it allows people to contact you straight away. Now, some of the variations on that could be things like message now or message through WhatsApp now or visit website, all sorts of options to help people to take action when they get to your particular page as well. On the right though, we've got the equivalent, but with Instagram. So again, having that, you know, plenty of evocative images showing up on the feed for Lucky Shrub, as well as a very good way of describing what they're all about. So not just giving it a great category, but also giving them a really, really solid description of what it is they do. And you can see there that the call to action for them is the follow message or call, which allows people to message directly through Instagram direct messages to call on the phone, which connects through to the phone dial on your iPhone or Android phone. And follow is just that sample, simple one that allows you to follow that particular, um, that particular profile on Instagram so you can see more of it later. One of the things that you probably see there is that you can have a link to your website as part of the bio in Instagram as well. Not everyone's taken advantage of that funnily enough, but if you've got a website, you might as well include it in there so that people can get to you nice and easily. So you can update your business information. The areas to really do that through is through your contact information part of your Facebook page. So in the Facebook uh, contact information, it goes beyond just where you are. It's all about how people can contact you, not only through phone, but also through Facebook Messenger. Links to your website is obviously very important. In fact, the link to your website is what can connect you so much better to search results in Google as well as your Facebook page is probably the second or even first result that comes up when searching for your specific business on Google. And having a phone number in there that's nice and tappable and easy to find is really important for people because that's that one bit of complaint that always comes up for people is why can't I just find their phone number? And then your short description. Now, there used to be uh, in the old layout of Facebook pages, you could see a thing called Our Story. Now, in Our Story has now gone away and it's, it's replaced by what was already there in the short description. The short description is a much more... a much more brief way of describing... <coughs> 
excuse me, is a much more brief way of describing what your business is. Now, if you have trouble writing really short descriptions of things, don't worry. There's a really good formula for it. It's basically who it's almost like a, like a, an elevator pitch who you are as in terms of your business. So the name of your business, what it is, um, the problem that you solve for people and who your ideal customer is. If you can get that right, get that sort of in together for your short description, that will help you tie down a lot of stuff into one short, sharp statement that makes so much more sense for your customers. Providing customer support is all done through your friend, the, uh, the, the messenger interface. Now with your, with your page messenger, you can set automatic messages for when people first come to your page called a welcome message. You've probably seen tons of those popping up in the bottom right hand corner of the desktop. You can set an away message for when you're asleep and the world's awake. You can send an away message saying, hey, we're not here right now, but we will be open again at 9am this morning and we'll respond there. You can also set saved replies. Now save replies are actually really quite clever because what they are is replies that you can click on later on for very quick interactions with people. So for instance, if there's things that people ask all the time, say for instance, what time are you open? Do you do home delivery? Um, you know, uh, do you sell indoor plants? That kind of thing can be instant messages that you can then send out. They're saved replies that you just tap on and it immediately puts it back as an answer for you rather than having to type it out every time. And then Instagram direct messaging is like the Instagram version of this that has pretty much all these same kind of things. In fact, the interface within your Facebook business suite or through your business page on Facebook now gives you an inbox that doesn't just contain your Facebook messenger inbox it also contains your instagram messenger inbox so you can see it all in one big inbox or break it down between facebook instagram um, and also then the interactions that are going on on your profile not just your likes and shares and comments that are coming through on facebook but also the the likes and the comments that are coming through on Instagram as well. Having one desktop place to go and look at is so much more convenient than having to pop from desktop to phone, desktop to phone all the time. And if you're on the fly on the phone, well, then you're already you know used to dealing with people that way, getting your stats, getting your messages, getting your notifications through there. That's not going away. That's still obviously very, very important to you be able to contact. The Facebook business suite is the new way of describing everything and seeing it like a central place for all your customer service stuff. So this is the unified inbox where you see all messages, messenger, Instagram direct, comments from Facebook and Instagram. And also you can set your automated responses. So you can automatically respond to people on specific questions that they're asking or automatic responses, say for when you're away. This allows you to answer those things that are coming up all the time. What's your phone number? Where's your store located? Um, what's your latest specials? You can even attach, you know, attachments to those automated responses. You don't need a third party chatbot to be able to do this. The Facebook platform will do it all for you. Um, what you don't probably know too much about the Facebook business suite is you can actually create your posts from in here and let them go to both Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Now it won't go to Instagram stories yet that I believe is still down the track a little bit but for now it will allow you to post the feed on both Facebook and your Instagram account from the same place at the same time and it allows you to then schedule those ahead so you don't have to worry about going oh, I've got to go back tomorrow and do my thing I've got to go back on Thursday and do my thing you can actually do it all in one go if you're the sort of person who sets aside a very specific time to do that. You can access your business suite through business.facebook.com. That's a really great place to start to see um, everything from your business manager, which will include your ads manager and ads account. But if you go down the list of options in your business.facebook.com interface, you'll see business suite as one of them. And it's certainly become a very important place for me to be doing most of my multi-posting now to a lot of the businesses that I'm helping to manage and to the committees and the not-for-profits that I'm volunteering for. You can also connect with your customers on WhatsApp business. Now, WhatsApp has never been as big a deal in Australia, but it's certainly a big deal elsewhere. And if you're selling things in places like Indonesia, places like Thailand, 
India, South America, even Europe and the whole of Africa. In fact, pretty much the whole world, except for the Anglo world of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US and UK, then WhatsApp is the primary app that's being used outside those countries. So if you're selling stuff online, this could be a very important thing for you to have. WhatsApp is a separate app on your phone. It does have a desktop interface as well. You can sign up for both of those and get those going. But the business version of WhatsApp is kind of like managing the business version of Instagram. If you have a personal WhatsApp or a personal Instagram, you can do lots of things. You can chat to your friends, have video calls, all that normal stuff. But with business WhatsApp, you get a lot of the features coming across from Facebook Messenger, like your automated responses, your away messages, your directions of where you are, your address, your link to your website, even you know the whole thing of having stats that you can bring up so you can show what you've been up to, um, what's performing best across you know the different interactions you're having. You can get to all those business level things that you can't get to in the regular thing. Now, why would you use WhatsApp if you're only selling to Australia? Because WhatsApp is still the second biggest messaging platform in Australia after Facebook Messenger. It's still very widely used. In e-commerce, not so much yet, but that is fast changing. It's pretty much where Facebook is heading to when it comes to encrypted messaging and the whole bringing together of WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and Instagram Messenger eventually into one great big messaging platform. You can download the app and follow the prompts to register your phone number. It is connected to your phone number. So you will have to have that connected. It's like when you go to, um, you know, deal with a driver in Bali or something. Um, it's, it's giving the phone number, but not using the phone network for calls rather than you're using data when you make those calls. So for me, it's, it's been a very handy one to keep in touch with businesses that I deal with overseas, as well as dealing with customers and you know, coaching clients that I deal with who are just not in Australia, but they're in other countries as well. It's available on iPhone and Android, that one. You can send people to your business by communicating them through chat and call. So you can use it as a customer service tool like you would use phones. And we're starting to become a lot more used to that, um, that whole video calling people. Things like the Facebook portal or, um, you know, the Alexa or Hey G, the, the big G word Google things um, that work with all sorts of, um, you know, devices that you can use to, to communicate with customers, not just friends and family. It's that sort of stuff's becoming a lot more common in businesses where we're taking calls through mobiles and taking calls through desktops that are actually video calls. You might have thought it was Jetson's technology back in the 60s, but it certainly is a big thing now. And you'll see so many options now of people to do that, including, you know, for customer service, it could be a great way of them showing you how to use that product rather than just trying to talk over the phone and communicating something through. My goodness, when I was working in a call center in the 90s during my university years, this sort of thing would have been amazing to have because you could have demonstrated how people can hook things up. And I was doing tech support, by the way. Um, it would have been so much easier to use. You can um, use all sorts of things like doing product demos. You can do you know, training videos, all that sort of thing through WhatsApp, just the same way you do with anything else. You can use short links and QR codes. So you've got a QR code that people can scan to start a chat with you on WhatsApp, which is a really handy way that a lot of offshore businesses are doing this now. They just go, oh, just here's my QR code. Just scan that and you'll be able to start a call with me straight away. And you can set up a catalog in WhatsApp as well. So the whole thing of starting to build your, um, your, your, your shop on Instagram and Facebook is now starting to come across to WhatsApp. Not available in Australia yet, but it will be in the coming months. It's becoming um, to be set up through the Facebook commerce manager in the same way that you would set up your shop on Facebook or on Instagram as well. So the key takeaways from this first section is prepare your online presence by setting up your Facebook page and your Instagram business account. And you can then go and move on to stay connected with those customers through Facebook Messenger and direct messages through Instagram. And then you can go a little bit deeper with WhatsApp for business. Now, you may not be ready for that. And that might seem a bit of a step away for you. Um, in Australia, you can probably get away without that right now, but it is something to look to for the future. Next, we'll look at keeping your audience engaged. And this is all about 
developing those relationships. So what we're going to cover is posting regularly, inviting your audience to interact with you, raising funds as well. So fundraising is really important when it comes to, you know, specific times or specific, you know, natural disasters. We have just, it was only 12 months ago, we went through the bushfire disaster. And we've almost forgotten about that due to COVID-19. And look at creating an Instagram reel as well. So by posting regularly, you're keeping your content very much up to date, very relevant and very connected with the people that are following you. And we call that following a community because that's what you build on social media, not just customers, not just followers, but a community of people who gather around a product or a service that you provide. Now, if you can pull that off, well, you want to be able to do it through things like creating polls. And you can do this through Instagram really easily. You can create a poll in your stories. You can feature your things like feature people who work for you, feature products that, that you're selling, doing product demonstrations, getting excited about unboxing the new things that come in. My friend Melissa, who owns a shoe shop with for women with big feet in um, Mackay and Biloela in Queensland. So you can't believe, I'm sorry, Morinbar in Queensland and Mackay. Um, you wouldn't believe that sort of thing existed in that place, but it absolutely does. And she's doing so well for it. And one of the best things she does is she does unboxings and she does them in Facebook and Instagram stories. So you can host things like your giveaways, prizes, and announce things like prize winners and promotions in those stories. The idea is to give new content more often that isn't quite so polished, but it's fun and interactive and easy for people to be able to relate to. That's through your stories, primarily through Instagram, where you can then have them sent onto Facebook, but you can actually post Facebook stories directly from the desktop as well, using a tool called Creator Studio that's part of Facebook as well. You can interact with people with live videos, which they really came into their own this year, didn't they? So many examples of people running live videos successfully to you know, answer the questions that people are ask, asking. They frequently ask questions are a great place to start. Doing things like product descriptions, you can pin people's comments so that you can say, this one stays here and I'm going to come back to that and actually answer that one because I want people to see it. And you can share things like photos and videos during live video, particularly on Instagram, it's really quite well done. Um, if you are quite terri terrified about live video, put it this way, um, I, I'm much more of a uh, an audio guy. I come from a world of radio uh, for quite a few years. So putting my face in front of things certainly wasn't the, what I really aimed to do. Trust me though, once you start doing it, it becomes far, far less awkward. It's not then about you, it's about the information you can share. So it's all about speaking about what you know, what you love, what you're passionate about, speaking from your expertise rather than having to go, oh, okay, I'm live, what do I talk about? You talk about the things you love, to the things that your customers love and how to connect those two. Start from the things you love, and then you'll never go wrong. You'll always have something to talk about. Fundraising, it can be done through the fundraising portal on Facebook. So if you're looking for that, just Google fundraising on Facebook and you'll find that one there. And it allows you to not just um, initiate fundraising for yourself as a not-for-profit, but if you're wanting to raise funds for other people, if your business cares for a particular charity that's registered and online, you can then do that. So it could be the RSPCA, it could be your local dog shelter, it could be a women's shelter, it could be a, a cancer council fundraiser or a leukemia foundation or the Red Cross. Any registered charities in Australia will be on this system and you can raise money for them. Um, you don't have to ask their permission to do that. You can raise money for them through this particular um, fundraising uh fundraising tool that pops up in stories as well. It doesn't have to just be stories. You can run that through your Facebook page and your Instagram as well. It's a way for you to connect your business with really good causes that your business is very much aligned with or that you personally have some level of belief or desire to be involved with. Now, Instagram Reels are a really new way. They're only a few months old now of discovering and creating short, very entertaining, very quick, very fast, very snappy, and often very funny and witty videos on Instagram. If you've heard about TikTok, it's pretty much Facebook's version of that on Instagram. So it's creating really short, very short, sharp, entertaining, often music-filled videos. 
Now, as a business reels account, you cannot attach um, licensed music to it yet. That is coming. But as a personal one, you might want to try it first as a personal person on Instagram and just load something funny up with music that comes from a great big library of millions of different songs. Or otherwise, you can make your own sounds, make your own noise. Not every um, TikTok has to have music involved. Not every reel has to have music involved. You can do anything you find that's actually quite funny. It could be a process of unboxing or reboxing or or packing up or moving or the silly things that happen in your day. Those short, sharp, entertaining videos on Instagram, they just have to be entertaining. They're not a place for ads. This is not an advertising space. It's a place to do something that's highly engaging and highly entertaining that people will love to watch. So to do a reel, here's the Instagram interface right now. Tap the camera icon at the top left of your feed. So you can see the camera up there on the top left just on the um, side where the Instagram logo is. Then you tap and hold the circle to start recording that clip. So you can record some bit of what you're doing. So chopping a lemon, doing a dance, dancing in front of a mirror, singing to a song in the background, doing something creative, and then you tap it again to end the clip. So you're not tapping and holding it um, to, you know, like you do when you're trying to record a video or go live on something, you're not just tap and holding it and holding it and holding it. You tap and hold, then you release, and then you tap it again to end the clip. Oops, we went backwards a little bit. There we go. And you can use a bunch of editing tools. So there's some um, audio that you can add to it through music. You can add, um, you can speed up or slow it down. You can add interesting effects to the photo. So you can make it look oldie worldy, or you can make it look like, you know, um, degraded film, or you can make it look darker and more mysterious. And there's lots of effects that come up over time that are going to um, be like temporary ones that they'll test out. The library gets bigger and bigger all the time. And you can set a timer too, to say how long you want this particular reel to be. At the moment, they're a maximum of 30 seconds long. Most seem to be about, about that 15 second mark, which is about, you know, the whole thing is about half the length of say a TikTok. TikTok can go for a minute. Um, Instagram reels at this stage are for 30 seconds. So you can watch the video back, you can trim it. So you can trim the bits out that don't look so great. Um, you can also jam together previous clips. So you're not just doing this one clip with the with the um, with the lemon. If you want to then have a chopping board with a tomato on it, you want to cut straight from lemon to tomato. Like it looks like you've actually gone like this with your hand. You've done a clap and it's changed from lemon to tomato magically. That's the kind of stuff you can do in reels. So using reels is this one way of just setting yourself apart from so many things that other people are doing. But think about you know all the cooking videos that people do where they've got like the food dancing around the plate and and jumping into the um into the pot that kind of thing stop motion almost you can do all that kind of stuff in a limited way with your reels as well and then you can tap the square in the bottom left to add a video that you've already taken so you don't have to do this from live video that you're taking right now and then editing that you can take video that you took yesterday something funny that you had from three months ago that's sitting in your camera roll you can pick that up and start working with that as well or if you've done stuff you've already done in TikTok or on Instagram videos, or you might've done it in any manner of other things. It could have been Adobe Premiere, for instance, or you just did it on your phone's camera. You can pick those up in the camera roll and use them again as part of an Instagram reel. And then you can add all the cool little stickers and the motion and lots of little drawings. You can squiggle over things, change the colors of things. And of course, add text, which is probably what most of us are going to do in those reels. And then you share it and off it goes to the world of Instagram. Now, where your reels will be shared is in the Instagram feed and they'll be shown in that portrait kind of layout. Um, they'll also appear in Instagram stories. So you've got this double ability to be able to have your reels shared to much more locations. So reels are a really fun way of, of actually stretching your Instagram that little bit further than what it is now just so set because Instagram, because they're, they're promoting reels a lot at the moment. So if you're getting onto the reels bandwagon, now's the time because you'll, you'll build a whole new audience from scratch that you never had before. So key takeaways from this part is to post very regularly to make sure your audience is keeping interested and engaged with what you're doing. Then invite your community to interact with you via Instagram stories 
and also live video on both Insta and Facebook. Live video is just not dying. It's not going away, but make it more than just talking like a talking head to a camera. Make it something that's quite entertaining, quite interesting. Bringing your community together to raise funds for causes you care about, like raising things like, for instance, your for Christmas, for Easter, for your store's birthday, anything like that could work as well. And creating short, entertaining videos with reels. Got a question from Andrea asking when videoing for Insta, should it be landscape or portrait? I say always landscape. Um, if you want to do portrait, you can do that for um, IGTV, which is the longer format of Instagram video. But for now, just remember that just that everybody's doing Instagram through here, they're not doing it through um, desktop. So if you're doing it through your phone, yeah, people are going to be consuming it on the phone. So it makes sense to do it all in portrait when you're working with Instagram. So let's look at increasing those sales online. We're still gonna look at very, very briefly setting up a digital storefront from through shops, looking at creating gift cards, hosting paid online events, which is very cool and boosting your posts to make them go further. Now setting up a shop is really cool because what it's done is, is the whole thing of shops on Facebook and Instagram has meant that people don't have to necessarily go to your website to do the checkout process. They can stay in the place where they feel safe, where things run fit quickly and fast and they're all encrypted and they don't have to feel like going to some dodgy website run out of a drop shipper in Vietnam. They can feel pretty safe when they're dealing with Facebook or Instagram. So the ways to discover the shops is through getting people to view it through a view shop button. If you've got a shop on your profile on Facebook, I'm sorry, on your business page on Facebook, then a view shop will take them directly through to your shop. That's a really easy way to do it. You can do it through Instagram stories. So if you've got um, different um, products that you've tagged in your, in your photos, you can then have them shop that collection through the story. So they can go straight to your Instagram store and be able to view that. And then product tagging, just like you can see on the right there on Facebook and on Instagram, allows you to see very specific products and show them how much they are and a link to go and view those. Now, those links don't have to just go to the, excuse me, the shop within Instagram or Facebook. They can go off to your website as well. So if you've gone to all the trouble of building a WooCommerce site or a Shopify store or a big commerce store or something like that, then you can link off to those as well. You don't have to have them stay within the Facebook and Instagram ecosystem. But already we're starting to see that it's so much more likely that people will buy that thing if they can do it within the platform without having to leave. Just the same way if you were going to a... Um, a tourist information center's website and you wanted to book a night at a hotel, you're much more likely to book that night at the hotel if you can reserve and pay for that particular room straight away rather than having to go, hey, um, let us know you're interested in this room and someone will call you back. You just go, oh, no way, I'll just book the one that's available to book online. So we're seeing the same thing starting to appear when it comes to Facebook and Instagram shops as well. You can customize these collections to match the way your stuff looks and feels. So you can, you've got a very clean minimalist way of doing things. Great, match your photos and match the look and feel of the particular shop in Instagram and Facebook to look like your store. Or if you want to go that little bit further and you want to you know, put a lot of bright, dazzling colors in there, do that as well. You can just do that by making sure that the photos you take that you're using for your products have good, cool backgrounds that have got all that color in them. And then make sure that your cover photo at the top also matches that look and feel. Now, gift cards are really helpful and they help you really sort of stay connected with the community because they allow you to give them another reason to buy stuff from you. Um, quite often, you know, I, I live away from most of my family and friends for a great period of the year. So gift cards are definitely a way I like to be able to shop because they show people that I still think about and care about them, but it recognizes that quite often the places I'm at don't really get a lot of, um, you know, they're, they're not places where I can shop a lot. Um, apart from buying, I guess, Aboriginal art. That's about all that's available in a lot of the communities I visit. So these allow you to generate a new revenue stream and of course, attract new customers like me who primarily do gift cards when it comes to Christmases and birthdays, right? So you can do this through um, supporting local businesses. There's a link there that allows you to buy gift cards that are actually through there. Now, this particular method isn't live in Australia just there. It's coming though. It's getting really close. I reckon by 
February, this one will be available for you. So you can actually then check it out through their website or right there within the app as well, the Facebook app to be able to do that. And supporting local, you'll see this flash up as an area of your, um, on the front page of your app on Facebook when it is available. And I believe they're starting this off with a few of those places that deal with this, like Red Balloon, um, that do um, those bigger vouchers like that, um, perhaps Maya and those kind of guys and Bunnings. Um, and then they're gonna allow us all to do it um, very, very quickly after that. They've had a very successful test of this one. In Instagram, it's gonna look really, really similar. There'll be a gift cards option over on the right as well. So um, if I'm not wrong, there's actually started this test in Australia already, just with about five different brands. So when they've got to that point, you know that's getting very close to being released in Australia too. You can host paid online events. And this is really cool because this used to be something which you had to do, say, through Eventbrite. You had to go, okay, through Eventbrite, I have to take the payments through there. So people are cook clicking here. They're interested in going. Um, and it's that whole thing of then having to go to another site to do a payment and go through Eventbrite's sign-up procedure if you've not used them before. It's just it's adding extra hoops for people to jump through. You wanna take those hoops away and you wanna give people a reason to be able to very quickly and very easily check into your events and pay for them right there and then. And this is now open for Facebook pages right across Australia. So you just go through a little bit of qualification criteria to make sure you're a legit business and you can start doing paid online events as well. So to onboard your business to do these, you can have a business page that has all been running for over 30 days because they want to make sure you're not just here to rip people off. You need to meet Facebook's commerce eligibility requirements. So there's a little um, step you have to go through. They'll do a manual review of that. So make sure you're not trying to do this today to be live tomorrow. Do this today to be live within a month and you give them plenty of time to be able to go through that for you. And then there's a start of terms, conditions um, and payment information process where you say, this is where I want the payments to go through to. Um, there's more in the terms and conditions. If you look for paid online events on Facebook um, through Google, uh, it'll take you straight to, straight to the help page. It'll give you all the details of any feeds, any terms, any conditions, and the kind of events you can and cannot run. So to start off those events, if you want to just give it a go, go to your page and tap events. You can tap create event, tap online, because it's an online event, not a live in person in a building event. Fill in your event details, then indicate where your event will be hosted. So this is either going to be something which you're doing live um, through, you know, through Zoom or you're doing it through Facebook Live, something like that. And then add a cover photo for your event. Now, a cover photo can be so important for getting the right level of attention. So make sure you have a think about that, that you're doing the right kind of photo that suits the right kind of thing that you want to achieve. Make sure it, just, it matches your brand without covering it to too many logos and stuff like that. We quite often do the same, that, that wrong thing ourselves with our events. We often just cover them in logos and it just looks kind of ridiculous. But hey, we've got to make our funding work for, for us somehow, don't we? And then you tap create event and you've got an event going. But then you can do all sorts of events. Think in terms of things like um, you know, live performances if you're a musician. Um, poetry readings, if you're a poetry, poetry place, think of tutorials, classes, workshops like this one we're doing today could just as easily be a paid thing. Or it can be presentations like art galleries or theatre performances that you want to show live, excuse me. <coughs> and then boosting your posts is always been this way of getting beyond. Now, uh, people say, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. You have to pay to reach people. But think about it this way. Back when we first used to get on Facebook and promote our businesses, there might have been about 50,000 businesses on the platform. So there wasn't a lot of competing stuff going for attention, right? You could you know, post something, you can guarantee 20,000 people would see it. That was in 2008. Fast forward to 2020 and 2021, there's nearly 20 million businesses now active on the Facebook family of apps. So you, there's a lot of competition there. And the way to handle that out is to say, well, we can't send everyone everything. There's only a limited amount of space for people to see. So to push things through to people who may not usually see it, you can use things like boosting. That's putting a little bit of money onto a post that you've got on Facebook or Instagram to ensure that a specific target that you're trying to see will see it. Now, the whole idea is not to make everybody see it. That's not what boosting is good at. It's actually really crap at that. What you want to do is 
put enough budget. So, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 bucks for a couple of days. Now, boosting, I will always say is for short-term advertising only. Boosting doesn't work well at all for ongoing because it doesn't learn who your customer is. It just literally looks at what you said and it goes, okay, I'll try and find that. If you use the ads manager though, that's where you have a lot more learning in place where you can retarget people who've shown interest in, you know, at least half the video that you put on there. But for boosting, it's really good for very short term promotions. The events are really good for boosting. Um, sales are really good for boosting. Anything that runs for less than two weeks is where your boosting really comes into its own. So if you want to boost something, tap boost post on the post you'd like to turn into an ad. And then that'll show you a bit of a preview of what your ad looks like. You can choose what your goal is, whether it's to get more clicks, whether it's to get more reach, things like that. Select your call to action button, which is like the, you know, read now, um, sorry, learn more, see menu, um, install app, those kind of things. And then define who it is you want to send that through to. Now, that audience definition is where you're going to really come unstuck if you don't know who your audience is. So think about what you're selling and think about who's the people who are most likely to buy that. That's your audience. Now, if you're in a little place like me in Darwin, defining your audience is kind of a waste of time because there's only, what, 120,000 people here. But if you're in somewhere bigger, say the Gold Coast, where you've got you know, nearly 700,000 people, then you're looking at something that's a lot more you know, nuanced. You can start to segment people down a whole lot more. Or in places like Perth or Brisbane, where you've got you know, 2 million people, well then segmenting people into what their likes and dislikes and locations and age groups and genders are may work a little bit better for you. And then of course you set a budget and a duration. You may wanna say, I wanna do this for 20 bucks for five days, then decide, where you want that ad to appear. So in quite often you can see the placements, um, depending on whether you're doing it from phone or whether you're doing it from the desktop, you can select whether you wanna run it on Facebook alone or Facebook and Instagram at the same time. I thoroughly recommend you do both. Um, you're not gonna lose out, you'll get more views on Instagram than we've got on Facebook quite often, depending upon who your audience is. If your audience is younger and more female, Instagram will go really well. So make sure you just use both to give yourself the maximum ability to be able to reach people. So create a bit of a plan when you're going into this. Don't just madly just go, I'm just gonna put 10 bucks on this. Know who it is you're trying to reach and the amount of time you're gonna run this thing for, knowing who you're probably your most likely target audience is, unless you're in a small town and you just might as well just send it to everybody because you know, you've got a very limited audience that you can build. And select the posts that have, or now this is a really good key, selecting the posts that have already performed well for you means that there's a whole bunch of data that can be used by the platform to find more people like the ones that have been interested rather than just saying, oh, you know what, I'm just going to post this all over the place and, you know, uh, it's not doing well. So maybe if I boost it, it will do well. Try, trying to force a bad post onto people is never going to work well for you. You've got to make sure that it's something which is already doing fairly well, that's already got some data that Facebook can use to be able to go, oh, I know who you're looking for now. I'll send you more of those. If you're trying to force a really spammy, really dodgy post that isn't doing well already through the system, it's not going to do that much better. And all you're going to do is waste your money. In fact, you probably won't even spend all the money that you're giving the Facebook to spend. It will just have so much trouble trying to find an audience who may be even vaguely interested in what you have to say. So key takeaways from part three, create your digital storefront. You can try out gift cards when they become available to the general public. You can host paid online events right now. In fact, from your page, it's got to go through the approval criteria and you can use boosting to reach more people. So we're starting to see what all these vital functions are you can do on these platforms beyond just simply posting organic stuff onto your feed. Now we look at managing your online presence. This is about getting the most out of what you're doing on Facebook and Instagram. We're looking at saving time with the business suite. We did touch on that very briefly to use it to create and manage your posts to track how well you're doing and also running some boosts through there as well. The business suite can be done through an app through the, uh, the Android and iOS um, app stores. So it's that little just look for Facebook business suite in, your, in Google Play or on the app store and you'll be able to find that easily. Um, it's also available on the desktop as well. So you can run that through business.facebook.com and see all the same sort of stuff. Now, business suite 
as I said before, has pretty much changed the way that I interact on Facebook on behalf of my clients and for my own businesses as well. It's centralized all the key stuff I need in this one place and this one app that allows me to run everything I need to do without having to sort of pop all over the place. You can view all the updates and messages. Now it's, it's a universal inbox for everything coming from Facebook and Instagram, your comments, any messages that have come through, everything's being alerted in there. So you can see what's happening at just one tab and know what's happening across the different parts of your business on Facebook and Instagram, whether it's comments, likes, messages, alerts, all that stuff is right there in your business um, suite. Now you can also keep up with how your communities are going um, with both Facebook and Instagram. So you can share posts to one or the other or to both. Now in this little preview you're seeing here, you can actually select whether you want to see it on Facebook or Instagram, or you can select both buttons, Facebook and Instagram, and see what your post is going to look like. It's going to give you a little preview of what it's going to look like. It allows you to have a really good idea of what it's going to look like before it goes out there so you can make any tweaks and changes before you do send it out. And what probably is the most important one and the one that most people make comments about is you can schedule those posts ahead of time. Not just Facebook, because we always could do that. It often it moved off to um, what they call publishing tools, which that's going away now and being replaced by this. And you can now do that also for Instagram. So being able to delay those posts going out means you can have that one afternoon a week where you do all your socials and then you can step away and you know it's all going to go there. And because this is actually part of Facebook's family of apps, you don't have to be worrying about buying third-party software to do all this anymore. Now, you might still want to be posting that same material to LinkedIn or maybe to Google My Business or Pinterest or places like that or even Twitter. Some, some people still use Twitter. Um, then in that case, yes, you'll need to have a third-party piece of software to do that. But in the case of just posting to Facebook and Instagram, you no longer need to have a third-party tool to do that anymore. So using something like Later, this has kind of replaced the need for having something like Later. Although Later does a really good job, I must admit, of linking through to posting um, stories on Instagram, which you can't yet do on Business Suite. You can also see your insights, all your stats, see what's working. So you can learn about you know, what posts have actually done the best for you, how many people they reached. And from there, you can also then start to boost people. So you're not just like viewing what the stats are, you're also viewing you know, where the things are that you can boost. So if you see on here that 1,209 people were reached, then it makes sense to hit that boost button and then you'll get that boost interface which shows you what it's going to look like how you can make changes to it and who you want to send it to so you can tell straight from the very beginning which stuff is doing best and you go yep that's the stuff i want to send out to a wider audience because it looks like people already like what i'm doing and then of course once you're boosted you can see how your boost is performing you can see what your money actually bought and breaking it down into genders ages locations and give you an idea of how much it was costing you to reach with or engage with or get a click from those particular audiences. And that figure there, that cost per engagement, or it could be cost per click, or it could be cost per action, um, is gonna be vital for you to know whether this is actually working or not. And then breaking it down between gender and age and location tells you where it's costing you less to reach more people. In this case, men were reached more broadly, um, but they were also engaged more openly, and it cost you less than what it did to get women to do that engagement with you in this particular you know, sample that they're showing. So key takeaways there, you can save a ton of time by using Facebook Business Suite. I'd say also save a bit of money because you're not having to pay a third party program to do all this stuff. Um, you can create and manage posts on Facebook and Instagram from this one location. That's so good. And you can track the insights, all the stats, all the performance of your posts and your ads in one place, as well as boosting through to go to a few other places. So you can see this has become now the business central area for managing everything to do with Facebook and Instagram. And then finally, the fifth per thing we're going to look at is the whole thing of hiring people and advertising jobs. Now you would have thought this would have been just a LinkedIn thing or going to seek or something like that to expand your team. But now you can actually do this within the Facebook family of apps yourself, where you can create really cool job listings and bring people onto your team. So if posting a job on Facebook is something that's um, 
it, it's a fairly new thing, probably been around about a year, a year and a half, and allows you to advertise everything from the description of the job through to the kind of job that it's being, the, the pay rate, um, the business that you'd be working for. And the advantage of putting this out there is that it's very easy for someone to read more about your business and see more about your business on Facebook. If they see just an ad in Seek, they often are working out, well, who's this for? Because often, you know, they're advertising and things like Seek and job finders and all those and not telling you the name of the business that you'd be working for. They're just like some recruiter who's hiding the name of the business. So they they don't go and apply directly through to the business. In Facebook, you can't do that. This is not a place for recruiters to get their cut. It's not a place for recruiters to get their $15,000 fee. This is a place for you to have control over the jobs you post and put it in one place where you're already spending your time on your business anyway. So you don't have to jump over 15 different tools and go to 15 different places just to manage your business. So let's take a bit of a closer look. First, you go to your page and select create a job. That's a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of post you'll do. So you can do this through business suite. You can do it through um, just through regular posting from your page. And you want to post a job opening. So you can see that here. Um, you've got jobs. Um, if you can see my cursor, I'm just underlining it now, managing jobs or posting jobs. Then you go and add a few details like the job title and the responsibilities. So in the job description, you can say what the businesses they're working for, where they should apply. So you don't have to have them apply on Facebook. You can actually have them go to a specific website if you'd like to. You can list the salary and pay details, whether it's a per hour, per year, or per week, or per month, and whether the job is full-time, part-time, casual. Then you can track and review your applications right here within the app. This is what makes things so much easier the job ads come, the job responses come in and you can manage them right there and starve them if they're people who you think are like the standouts after you've read their applications or maybe not. Now, the other thing too is you're seeing their Facebook, um, their Facebook profiles, which is encouraging people to be a bit more serious about their Facebook rather than being idiots about it. You, can, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the amount of people who have I mean, I've advertised jobs on this particular platform who haven't updated their Facebook profiles to get rid of all those drunken nights out and flashing their bits and all that photos. And I've just immediately looked at that and go, you are going to be a problem, I'm not hiring you. And you can contact the applicants and schedule the interviews as well through Facebook Messenger. So you've got this full end-to-end -end job platform that's sitting in the back of your Facebook business page. And you then boost those job posts as well, just the same way you can boost any other kind of post on Facebook as well. It's pretty easy to use. Just go to that page, you know, that page in your settings where it's got all the options like your groups and your pages or there's jobs in there. You can view the job that you've had on there. You can, you know, if you're looking for a job in that area, you can look at the list of jobs that are in that area and apply for them. Um, and then you can also set a status for your, for your jobs as well. You can say the job's now closed or it's been filled, that kind of thing. And you can even put in there that people can um, call the phone, like you can call the phone number of the person who's applied in the case of Alicia here, Alicia Ron in Menlo Park, California. You can click on the call phone and it will call their phone from directly from that, that profile. Or you can send an email through them if they've got their email address listed in their profile. Or you can schedule an interview with them through the calendar. So there's lots of ways to do this that keeps you kind of within the platform where you're already doing so much business anyway. Makes sense. If you're already in there, you can do it all from one place. You're checking your own messenger all the time. So you can monitor not only the messages coming in from a customer service and orders perspective, but the job applications coming in as well. But unlike email, where it all gets smushed into one feed. You've got this all coming into different parts and different feeds within the app. So some of the best practices for you would be to use a very um, descriptive job description. Be very, very descriptive of it. You can say, yeah, you can ask more questions in the interview if you get that far. But the idea is to sort of filter people through first by giving them the information they need to make the right choice about whether they're going to apply or not. Then add a few questions for your candidates. So you can say, you know, um, when you answer these questions, they give me a better idea about who you are. And it also lets you know whether they've actually got the skills to be doing the job or if they don't. And you can star your favorite candidates by tapping on the circle on the right in that list of candidates there. So 
You can expand your team with jobs through the Facebook family of apps now. And by using a very thorough job description, you're going to help sort of narrow down the kind of people that you're looking for to fulfill that job. That was a lot to cover. We've done pretty well in 50 minutes. So the key takeaways for the whole program we've done today is you want to start by getting online on Facebook and Instagram Messenger and also WhatsApp. Take a look at WhatsApp if you haven't already done it and see how that may sort of fit into your business plans. Keep your audience engaged by creating really good interactive content through things like Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and Instagram reels as well. Letting people know that you're not just there, but you're going and creating really cool interactive stuff that's going to get their attention and keep them coming back for more. Third, you increase your sales with things like your shops soon with gift cards as well. And feel free if you're a freelancer or you're doing a lot of teaching stuff or you're a coach to start using paid online events as well and boost those events and those shopping um, things and regular posts as well, as well as products through boosting. And then you can manage pretty much your whole business on Facebook and Instagram now through Facebook's business suite, which like I've said a couple of times now, this has become the, the default way that I now manage businesses um, because it's just so complete. It's got everything in there I can possibly need it to have when I'm dealing with just Facebook and Insta, which makes up a massive proportion of the public outreach that I'm doing and the marketing that I'm doing. If only it had a link through the, the LinkedIn, I'd be completely in there and I wouldn't have to manage anything else. And then at the very end there, we looked at the ability for you to be able to hire people through Facebook as well. So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It's been um, a bit of fun to um, spend our lunch times together. You can take a moment to complete the survey by scanning this QR code and give you a little training feedback to say, who am I? My name is Dante St. James. Um, and the event we did was your five essential Facebook tools for business. Um, if you can put all the information in up to you, you don't have to do it. I don't really need the feedback that much. It doesn't go to me, it goes to Facebook anyway, just so they know that I'm a good trainer. And thank you so much again for uh, spending some time with this afternoon. We've got more of these coming up. In fact, I've got 21 new modules from Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger, and WhatsApp coming in January. So please watch out from the ASBAS program for a lot more stuff coming through in January as well. Thank you and have a fantastic afternoon.